So what I got here is a elk caddis wing with a big head, which I don't want because like obviously I have a lot of space here, so I need to tie in a thorax. So what I can do is like I can just come here with my scissors, even though I'm using those TMCO scissors, and I'm coming pretty close, as you can see. Okay. So I want to cut this and cover it with thread, yeah? I need to use a lot of thread wraps to cover up all those butt ends. So instead of doing so, I'm just gonna do a very simple thing and solve my problem. So let's go from the start. So obviously I'm going to tie rather simple fly and there are not many things to do here to make it wrong, yeah? Well, uh, you can be wrong about that. So I'm gonna talk about how to tie in the nice bite body, how to nice nicely tie those wings and how to do the nice thorax that looks buggy and Let's go into tying, very simple one. So first of all, I'm using 900 BLTM hook in size 14. I love it, it's reliable. It's perfect hook in my opinion. It doesn't have this so-called tactical uh, wide gap that uh, it's like fashionable right now. But it's hold fish good, it catches fish good, it hooks fish good. So it's just perfect hook in my opinion. Now, this is peacock uh, female body by it. Uh, natural white tail, white white tailed deer, and some hairs that being mixed with a purple eye stub. Uh, thread is nano silk by Semperfly in fifty denier. So without any further ado, let's just jump jump into tying. As I said, hook size fourteen, more or less average caddy size I, I would use maybe 16 is a little bit more useful sometimes as, as the, the, the weather gets hotter and hotter so start your thread somewhere around where you want your wing to start so this is going to be covered by bayat keep your thread flat that's super important because you want to have flat foundation for your hook for your bayat body if you don't have flat foundation the bayat won't adhere properly to the hook shank so keep the thread as flat as you can and as you can see you can see the hook color even though the, the, the thread is white meaning that I'm using the flattest thread possible now I'm gonna cut out one of those bayat cut it lengthwise and make it more narrow that's very important because it's going to be easier for you to uh, to tie it off. Especially it's important when you do it on small flies. Now, instead of using constant pressure on your thread, your thread will behave like a wall because it's very sturdy, it's like not soft. It just pushes away your materials. Spin your bobbin counterclockwise so it, your thread will jump into your non-dominant hand go slowly around hook as you can see no pressure at all and then tie in your bayat now with flattened thread cover the rest of your hook shank and that's it you have smooth underbody uh, foundation for your uh, bayat that's super important now what, next what you need is some super glue. What I like to use it's gel. Gel just give you more time. It gives you more time and it's easier to work with. So just a little bit of gel. Spread it along the hook shank. I mean you can use the thin one but it's going to be uh, well, it's difficult to control. 
Now remove the excess. You don't need all that much. Okay, that would be it. Oops. Take hackle pliers, wrap the, the by it, and uh, by keeping an angle of wrapping your by it, so this is an angle, this is more open, the, like perpendicular, just keep the same angle all the time, and this will ensure uh, consistent uh, spacing. You can decrease or increase the angle and control how much spacing you will have between those segments. And notice the super glue in front of Biot. Biot is pushing the super glue, distributing it, and that's why it's not so important to distribute the super glue perfectly before you start wrapping the Biot. But this is the, uh, the, the Biot, since it's flat, it's very important to have underbody flat, as I told you already, because it will adhere uh, and more, and it will keep your fly uh, oops, more safe. Now with flat thread, I'm gonna cover up this piece here, and I'm gonna make this piece here, uh, this part of the fly here, uh, just smooth, because my wings are going to come and be here. So for the wings, I'm going to use uh, natural white tail hair, very important step in the making of elk wings is to clean the hair from uh, under fur because under fur is like a bonding material for this it's going to prevent you from properly stacking and from properly tying in your wings so remove all the under fur if possible now i recently got a fake cndf hair stacker works pretty well and I guess that anyone who can work with metal can make you one so you don't need to spend too much money on some things now a couple of times last times just hit it like this don't jump like so so hit stop hit stop hit stop and always do it at an angle because the, the hair is going to be down nicely perfectly aligned without any hesitation just grab it pull it out and now let me see what we are with it's nicely okay now what I want to show you with these wings is how to how not to do it as I showed you at the beginning so just measure those wings I'm gonna align it again because I don't like it so, I'm gonna show you how to tie them and uh, tie them neatly. So, align those wings wherever you want, transfer your hand and use your fingers uh, to tell you where to cut the hair. Cut it by a very slight angle. So, not vertical, but by an angle and with a flat thread Sorry, with a twi slightly twisted thread, go around hook and around the hair with two turns. Now place, this is too far away from buttons. So one, two, and I'm gonna put index finger towards me to keep the hair on the top and pull the thread up. And then I'm going to do that one more, two more times, sorry one two and the pressure is always up now I can keep the tension check the wings they're placed on the hook shank not around or all around or like under so I'm gonna flatten the thread now very important because with wider thread you can cover those butts more easily okay now with flat thread cover those butt ends and as you can see I'm making rather smooth transition towards the eye 
Now with flat thread I'm going backwards again covering all those rest buttons and now you have perfect uh, perfect uh, segment to tie in the rest of your fly. The rest of the fly is thorax and I'm going this here I'm going to use this hair uh, mix so rabbit hair and some purple ice dubbing. I'm going to just make it elongated like so and I'm gonna insert this into the split thread so again you need flat threads to split it GSP is very useful here because it's easy to split and even if you don't split it properly it's going to be strong enough to hold your dubbing now as I was saying I'm gonna insert everything in between spin the thread, spin the bobbin actually uh, clockwise and then help it with my fingers again clockwise obviously and that's it now I'm gonna keep, the keep my wing on the top so pull the pressure upwards now you can pull the pressure all the way as you want it. Okay. I want I have to hear a little bit too much. So just remove the excess. Push away those hairs. And then with flat thread make a whip finish. Now flat thread is very important if you're using for example UTC or some thread that's not super strong with GSP not so important but it's preferable because it will uh, you're going to align those wraps more evenly and without any bumps that will actually weaken the knot so instead of going wrap over wrap what you do is like wrap after the wrap adjacent ad do those wraps next to each other I don't know how to pronounce that word so pull backwards tighten the knot and then with non serrated blade just cut the the GSP you can use velcro a little bit to split those legs and here you are, you got yourself a nice caddis with nicely positioned wings on the top of the hook shank so the body can lay low in the film uh, thorax will suggest legs these wings will hold your fly on the surface if you use some floatant it will float even more and uh, because you made very nice uh, whip finish, the head is again looking perfect you don't need to color it because GSP which is white when you tighten it will get the color from the color that was beneath so you don't need to color GSP that's good uh, so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and see you next time